Hey up everyone, welcome back to the Rugby League History Channel. Hope you're all well on this Saturday. Tonight's video is going to be a bit different from the normal videos I do. Tonight I'm going to be doing a video about the NRL and the, and the next big things in the NRL. Now I've been reading over the last couple of weeks about this South Sydney junior or player by the name of Joseph Suwali, I think his name is, that's how you pronounce it. And there's been a bit of a tug of war between rugby union and rugby league to try to get this lad signing because apparently he's supposed to be the next big thing and it got me thinking i was thinking how many times have we heard of players being called the next big thing the next big sunny williams or the the next andrew johns and they just never really reached the heights of what was predicted of them and tonight i've just got a, a list of a couple of players that um either are still playing now or no longer play or play in rugby union that way at one stage touted as the next Sonny Bill Williams, the next Andrew Johns, the next Darren Lockyer and it just never worked out. So the first player that I've got on this list is one that people might not know and his name is Carl Falega. Now he played juniors with Canterbury and I remember at the time he was going to be, well he was touted as the next Sonny Bill Williams. And there was a bit of a, a tug of war for his signature between a lot of different clubs. And Kunule ended up getting his signature. Now, he'd never played a game of face grade. And Kunula signed him for $600,000. And he had a few injuries before he actually made his face grade debut. So he made his debut against Penrith. And he only made um, one appearance for the club. And it was for 11 minutes. Now, the following year, he was released by the club. I think it was in 2009. And he never played first grade again. After that, he ended up at uh, Wentworthville. And then now, the last time that I checked in on him, he was playing for the Kuma Stallions in, I think, the Group 10 competition. So, that's the first player on the list I'm going to name. The next one is Tepai Morowe. Um Coming through the grades, I remember being a Parramatta fan. I follow all the, the junior leagues and that. And everyone was seeing that he was going to be the next Nathan Hindmarsh, the next Sonny Bill Williams. Um, there was a rugby union where what to sign him. He also had um, a good track and field background as well. So he was good at shot put. He was good at uh, discus, I think. And he was thinking about giving up on rugby league and going to the to the Olympics but Parramatta persuaded him to sign and he made his debut I think about five or six years ago against uh, New Zealand but the following week against South Sydney I remember this game clear as day you had the likes of Andrew Voss you had Phil Gould you had Andrew Johns all seeing that uh, the way that he played reminded them of Sonny Will Williams or Nathan Ironmarsh and they said, this kid's got talent. This kid's going to be a future superstar of our game. Well, anyway, um, five or six years later, multiple head concussions. His hair fell out. And with his form dropping, he ended up leaving Parramatta at the end of last year. And now he plays for the New South Wales Waratahs in the Rugby Union. The third player on the list is Dave Taylor. Um, his nickname was The Coal Train. Um, I remember him coming through the grades. Everyone said, this kid could be the next star, Arthur Beetson. He's uh, got all the skills. He's got the size. He's got the power. He's got the ball skills, all that. And um, in the early stages of his career, he was actually kind of looking um, towards that tra trajectory in his career. Um, he had a good couple of years at Brisbane. Then he signed with South. And he did all right there, but he had a couple of problems. And his form kind of dropped off a bit. Then he ended up at the Gold Coast, and that's where things really went downhill. And uh, he just wasn't really the same player anymore as he was in the earlier days. And then he ended up over in uh, France with Le Catalan. Then he um, signed with Toronto, but he was sacked before he got to play a game because he played up while they were on a, a training exercise in Portugal or something like that. And then he ended up at the Central Coast uh, Capras. But I think before that he had a stint at Canberra as well. I think Ricky Stewart gave him a lifeline, but things didn't work out there either. 
So he ended up at the Central Coast Cappers and the last thing I ever heard of him was Aaron Bowling was making fun of his weight, which I, I think was bang out of order, but um, he ended up there and then I think slightly after that he retired. So that was the end of Dave Taylor. The next player on the list, Tim Smith, um, he made his debut for Parramatta in 2005. He won the Rookie of the Year that year. He set a, a try assist record in the NRL, which has not been broken since. Not even the likes of Neath and Cleary, um, Cooper Cronk, players like that have even come close to his record. He made 40 try assists in that season when we won the minor premiership. 2006, he wasn't that good. 2007, he was getting back to his best form. Then 2008, he left the club, citing mental health issues. He had bipolar or something like that, and he was he was also homesick because he was from Queensland. He ended up over a year in England, so that kind of makes no sense. Then he went back to the NRL, signed with Brisbane, didn't make an appearance for them. Then signed with Cunulla, had played a handful of games for them. And then he ended up back over here in England and played. he played with Salford and Wakefield. And his career come to an end when him and Kevin Locke, they got mortal drunk. He jumped in behind the wheel of a car and they crashed it into someone's house. And that was pretty much the end of Tim Smith's career there and then. Uh, the next player on the list people wouldn't probably know. His name was Greg Waddell and he was a, a Penrith player, a Penrith lower grade player. He actually signed the most expensive schoolboy contract in history at that stage. Unfortunately, things didn't really work out for Greg Waddell. He ended up um, succumbing to some mental health problems and he had a couple of injuries and that. He never actually ever got to make a first grade debut, but he was touted as one of the future superstars of the NRL and it just never worked out. Tyrell Fui Miona was my next player. Um, he was another Parramatta player that come through the lower grades. He was destroying everyone, playing really well in the lower grades. And everyone said, this lad's going to make it. He's going to be a, a future superstar of our game. Um, we ended up getting shot of him. He went to South. He made a handful of appearances for them. Then he was released, went to Penrith struggled to get a game with them, was released by them, and now he's at St George, um, struggling to make the bench for the St George club, so um, that's Tyrell Fuimeono. Next player, Ash Taylor. Um, once again, another player that played in all the, the junior Australian teams, junior Queensland teams, touted as being one of the next big things, and he hasn't really lived up to his... To his potential or what people have said of him um, he's uh, been playing on a million dollar contract he's had mental health issues he's had some other problems injuries and uh, I think if most people were to draw, draw up their overreader list now Ash Taylor would be high on that list the next player Mitch Cornish same boat as Ash Taylor went through all the juniors junior New South Wales I think he won man of the match in the the under 20 state of origin um, series uh, man of the series in the, in the under 20s he was touted as one of the future Canberra stars never worked out and then he ended up playing I think two year with East and then he retired to be a, a real estate agent I think on the central coast uh, Matt Grote he was a um, a, a junior coming through the West Tigers ranks. I remember being at like how over one day when he was playing one of his first games and a lot of the, the, the West fans around me were saying, oh, this Matt Grote, he's going to be something. He's been great for us in the lower grades. He's going to be like a future Steve Roach. He's going to be a real, a real good front row for us. It didn't really work out that way. Um, I was looking on Wikipedia, I think, last year and he ended up in places like Dewsbury over here. And then I think now he's playing for the East Tigers in the, in the Queensland Cup. So he didn't end up being the Steve Roach that some people thought he was going to be. Luke Brooks, speaking of West Tigers, I, I remember I watched his debut. And everyone said that he was going to be the next Andrew Johns. And 
and he was another player coming through the grades. He was uh, sweeping past everyone that was in front of him. He was a terrific talent in the lower grades, but coming in the NRL, he's been decidingly very average. I, in, in That's in my opinion anyway, decidingly average. And he currently holds the record for the most NRL games played without playing the finals match. And the last player on the list is Keen LJ. Like some of these other players on the list, like Ash Taylor, like Mitch Cornish, come through the, the, uh, the lower grades, played for all the junior representative teams. I remember there was a lot of hype around Keen LJ. He played for a few years up, up, up on the Gold Coast. Uh, things didn't quite work out for him there. He got a release to come down to Manly. And I think he only played about a handful of games for Manly. And then he, he went on Instagram and said, um, you know, I've just had enough of uh, rugby league and I think I'm going to get rid of it. So I'm going to quit. And uh, he only retired, I think, at about the age of 25, 26. And uh, I think a lot of people that would have... Um, predicted him to be one of the next big things would have uh, would be really red faced after after that incident but anyway that's me uh, NRL next big thing video where they didn't end up becoming the next big thing I hope you enjoyed the video if, if you've got some next big things if you've got some players that you can think of that were talked up but never really made it let me know in the comment section below and uh, if you're enjoying the channel, if you're enjoying the content that I'm making, the videos I'm doing, uh, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and you click that notification bell so you get an email when I do a new video. But as always, everyone, I look, look after yourselves and I'll catch us all later. Tara.